Justin, the concept of aesthetic cognitivism is uh, an emergent idea. It's not something that has been prevalent in university departments. Or, and uh, I, I like to try, to, in order to understand, to see what the intellectual foundations of it, what are the different content areas of, of disciplines from which it emerges. And obviously, cognitive science is, is one of them, if not a primary one. So what is it about cognitive science that can enable us to uh, understand aesthetic cognitivism? Well, the cognitive sciences are an interdisciplinary area that is trying to help us understand how do minds work? How do we think? How do we form concepts? How do we reason with those concepts? And not just in the explicit kind of reflective way that we might be doing right now as we're talking, but in the sort of intuitive gut instinctual almost kind of way that we're not always consciously aware of and it seems to me just exactly those dynamics are what's at play when we interact with various works of art um, it's not just what am i aware of thinking when i encounter mm -hmm. a work mm -hmm. but it's what's it doing to me that i'm not even aware mm -hmm. of and maybe begins to work in me that is going to blossom later after I've interacted with it. So understanding those kinds of dynamics on how minds work and how they engage various works is fundamental, I think, to how we experience the arts. What are some uh, specific uh, areas, examples of what that could be? Well, we could be looking at why is it that some types of artworks uh, provoke us to look at things a new way, a way that we've never looked at before, so to t adopt a new perspective. Um, which works and why uh, do they spark our what if, our thinking about hypotheticals? Mm -hmm. Some works probably are, are likely to encourage us to ask new questions, new hypotheses that could then guide even our scientific exploration. So there are lots of different subdomains of thought that we might think, well, maybe the arts, or at least some of the arts, are really uniquely qualified to encourage in us. Are there differences among the arts and how they, um, how they utilize some of these cognitive facilities? Well, that's the big question. Um, or is there just a uni one unified idea that each one expresses in its own way? Uh, it, that seems unlikely, right? Uh, what we call the arts, uh, you know, has a bit of a, a social and intellectual history behind it. It would be really surprising if it just all happens to have the same kinds of dynamics in terms of what it does to our thinking. Mm -hmm. My guess is that when we start aggressively thinking of the arts from this cognitive science approach, we're going to see what well, what we've seen in other areas of cultural expression that what we thought was some kind of roughly unified whole really is lots of different sub areas uh, with different dynamics, different causal pathways that lead mm. to their expression, different causal consequences, including the consequences on our thinking and mm. feeling. Mm. Take a specific example, a piece of music, a, a, a painting, uh, an artwork, and describe how that might work. What are the kinds of questions you would ask about it to discern those uh, inner triggers that will be largely subconscious? Okay, here's an example. Um, uh, how about a, a dance, even a simple kind of dance? Um, the chicken dance, I don't know, something you might do at a wedding. <laughs> From a cognitive perspective, we might be asking questions like, what is it that makes that dance so catchy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How is it that it's so easy to remember, that lots of groups of people can do it and find it oddly rewarding? I mean, this isn't high mm -hmm. art, I recognize that. But there's something about it, there are little hooks in human psychology that have made it latch on to us mm -hmm. and make it spread really easily. And we might think, in terms of a program of study, of looking at, well, what are, say, the developmental origins of, of those hooks in early childhood? What is it in children that when they hear music, they start moving? Spontaneously, it seems like. Um, that they're so good at imitating other people. That they feel reward when they can see that they are copying somebody really effectively. Um, that uh, they manage to do things in beat and on time. That's a really unusual mm -hmm. kind of behavior amongst animals. Humans are among <coughs> the only animals that mm -hmm. can actually keep time mm -hmm. and will clap, mm -hmm. clap in rhythm and mm -hmm. so forth. Where does that come from? 
And what does that do to us in terms of our psychology? Um, there's reason to think that that helps bond us together, makes, makes us feel like we're mm -hmm. part of the same thing mm -hmm. on the same team. Um, that might give us a sense of, well, we're all part of something bigger than just mm -hmm. our individuals. Those are just little examples in a silly chicken dance, but, <laughs> but we might think of that in, in, in other works of art as well. When I'm thinking about the concept of, of uh, aesthetic cognitivism and thinking about music, which is the art that I know the best, um, I, I want to take two radically different expressions of how art has this powerful impact on potential spirituality or theology or something. And if I take on the one hand the great requiems, Mozart, Brahms, uh, Mrs. Solemnus of Beethoven, uh, and, and, and feel what that does to me. And on the other hand, I take some of the chants of, of certain cultic, generally Eastern religions, I won't mention any in particular, but uh, when I have studied those and I was at those sessions, I, find my, I found myself being captivated by yeah. them and I couldn't get them out of my head because it had, uh, and it, it, it just took over me. Right. And, and so we tend to think the former is art and the latter is uh, a kind of cultic uh, control or something. But it, <laughs> I, I, it, may, it may be <laughs> the same thing. I, I, I'm, I'm wrestling with that. Right, they may be playing on some of this, at least some of the same dynamics, if not all of the same dynamics, for sure. Now, what's exciting to me about starting this area of aesthetic cognitivism and, and what it could yield in terms of inquiry is getting at just those kinds of distinctions. Well, on, on what basis are those the same kind of thing? And, and where do they really deviate, yeah. even though they're both music? Yeah. Um, maybe the category music is too sloppy <laughs> for the kind of precision we're looking for. Yeah. 